Well guys, got a bit of a video for you. Just in case you're wondering why there's a big white container on the screen here. Uh, no, we are not making beef jerky again. Uh, not yet, anyways. We are preparing for the first barbecue of 2013. Now of course, as you guys have watched by now, I have uh, fixed the Weber Genesis uh, propane fueled barbecue by replacing the regulator. Now uh, we can start getting on with our regular, um, you know, barbecues. Pretty much we went all winter without, uh, without a barbecue. And uh, this spring here, um, you know, I got sick of staring at it and decided either I'm going to fix it or toss it. Just um, on the spur of the moment, I replaced the regulator with one that I had kicking around and hey, it worked. So of course, as you see here on the right of the screen, we have uh, the meat. We have two kinds. Uh, the one is a beef uh, sirloin steak. As you see here, there's four pieces. And of course, I bought um, some other ones here. These are the beef uh, rib steak and they are two pieces. So of course, after you have washed your hands and all that, you can tear into the meat. Pretty much, um, no real wrong way to do it. Just grab a hold of it and, uh, you know, put her all in the container here. Of course, you want to discard the little, um, you know, plastic, uh, what do you want to call it, absorbing pad thingy there. You don't want to be throwing that into the marinade. Once you got the first two pieces in, tear into the second pack or or whatever's. And uh, we'll throw those in on the container as well, just on top of the other ones. There's no real, um, if you will, wrong way of doing it. There you go. We got our meat in the container. Now, if you want to at this point, you can add your spices, seasoning, you know, garlic, uh, steak spice, whatever you want to do. Or you can leave it until uh, a little bit later if you want. Um, you know, we have various seasoning, various spices out there that uh, you can season pretty much anything to your taste. And uh, kind of let her be there. You know, as well as uh, they have marinades and stuff like that. Of course, for us, we're going to do a little bit of both. We're going to use some of the marinade as well as some of the spices. So we'll dump our marinade in. Now, of course, this is not the same marinade mix that um, we used for our beef jerky. This is a special, um, you know, steak spice uh, marinade. Of course, it is for beef. If you uh, see the beef fi figure down there, there are special ones for uh, chicken. I'm assuming because it's a different type of marinade. Now, of course, if you notice there, the marinade's not quite uh, quite deep enough to cover the steaks. Rather than buying um, four bottles and wasting two of them, what I do is I take the uh, bottles that I just emptied, fill them with water, and use the water to, if you will, thin down the marinade. Yeah, I know, I shouldn't probably thin down the marinade because it's going to affect the outcome of it. But um, at the same time, it's cheaper to do it in this way and it works just the same. Of course, it will will marinate just the same. It will give you the same results. Uh, halfway through, you know, we'll give them a flip and uh, all that. And then she'll be good to go. So yeah, guys, as you see there, these steaks are marinating. They're pretty much uh, on their way to being uh, good to go. Of course, we'll throw these back in the fridge, getting them, uh, you know, cooled off and everything, allowing them to marinate. We'll come back in a little bit. Um, for you, it'll be just a matter of seconds. For me, it'll be about 24 hours. Give them a flip. And then in 24 hours again, we can uh, give them, you know, the final barbecue. So guys, we'll throw the container on here, throw this in the fridge, and away she goes.
Well guys, here we are uh, about 24 hours later, uh, for me anyway, for you guys, it was just a matter of uh, matter of seconds. So of course we'll um, give the meat a bit of a turn here, of course bring in the ones from the bottom to the top and ones from the top to the bottom. Now of course um, this meat here was unfrozen and if you will like raw or fresh when it went in here. If you are dealing with frozen meat going in here, um, the marinade, um, there's two schools of thought there. The marinade will have given a chance to have soaked in as the meat unthawed. But the other school of thought is too that uh, it'll still be slightly frozen at this point so you know sometimes you may need to let it marinate a little while longer to get results that you may be looking for so guys there we go we got it all turned now again of course if you're wanting to add more uh, spices seasonings or whatever you know do it now and yeah as you see here you know the, mar the marinate or the mix is starting to soak into the meat it's kind of changing the meat a little bit of a different color as it soaks in. So guys, we'll let her soak a little bit longer, uh, probably about another 24 hours or so. And uh, you know, then she should be good to, uh, good to go. Okay guys, so uh, well, the steaks and stuff are marinating. We're going to dice up some onion, of course, because we want sautéed onions and uh, mushrooms. So what we're going to do is, uh, like I said, uh, give the onions a bit of a peel here. Pretty much just uh, removing the gold uh, and this the first little layer of um, what do you want to call her if you wanna. Now you can do one onion, you can do two onions, depends on the size of the said onions. Some onions are bigger and of course they will yield more um, and of course other ones are smaller which won't give you nearly as much once they're all diced and uh, you know cooked right. So yeah, we'll just, um, you know, get the other one all ready for Dyson by pretty much repeating the same steps that we just uh, did on the other one. Now it depends on um, how many onions you're doing. Uh, if you're doing quite a few onions for some type of big meal or something where you need several, um, I have seen people use a pot um, potato uh, french fry maker after they're peeled like this, run them through, and uh, it dices them down to basically makes onion french fries, if you will. Then you take those onion french fries and dice them down again even smaller. But of course for us we're only using uh, two because that's really all we really need. So. Just run your knife on through them, of course, watching your fingers because the last thing you need to do is be cutting anything off. And no, contrary to popular belief, it does not add for extra flavoring. So once you've got them uh, quartered, halved, however you want to do it, you pretty much just start, um, start cutting. Now I'm sure if you're doing a large meal, a large for a group or something like that, I'm sure um, there is a place out there where you can buy pre-diced onions, of course, like nowadays everything seems to be, um, you know, ready to serve, ready to eat, ready to cook. But um, you know, like I said there, just for a small group, small setting, one or two onions will be, uh, you know, plenty ample, good. You don't need to get uh, too fancy on that. Of 
And there you go guys, once so basically she's all diced up, you can um, put those into a bowl. Pretty much just like that and she's uh, good to go. So we can start uh, opening up our mushrooms, dumping them into the frying pan. Now you remember in some of my other cooking videos how I talked about a liquid inside of the canned mushrooms. Most of the time this is just water, it's nothing uh, exotic or fancy or you just uh, pretty much dump that out, drain it on, on down. And then pretty much uh, you're left with that, a can full of semi-dry mushrooms. So we can dump those in the frying pan uh, anytime we're pretty much ready to go. We'll let them, um, you know, brown a bit, if you will, cook a bit with a little bit of uh, margarine or butter or oil or whatever you choose to use. For me, I'm going to add oil. Of course, uh, just a little bit. And uh, the oil itself will help the mushrooms and onions uh, cook or saute rather than, uh, you know, burning. So we'll go light the barbecue, get that warming up, throw the steaks on the grill, and then we can start with all the inside uh, food work. Well guys, here we are. We're just going to give the Weber Genesis barbecue a light. Let her give a warm up and to give her a clean, then throw the meat on. So of course, uh, turn it on the tank. Kind of hear the hiss of propane. Press the uh, igniter here and away she goes. And we'll let that warm up nicely. Come back out here, give them a clean. And like I said, then she'll be ready for the meat. So now that the barbecue is warming up, uh, we're going to start to do the prep for the instant potatoes. Now of course, uh, unlike um, normal potatoes, like ones growing, where you have to cut and peel them and boil them and then uh, mash them, the instant potatoes, are some of them are basically an add water and stir. This recipe calls for um, water, milk and uh, margarine or butter, whatever you choose to use there. So of course what we're going to do is tear into the package. Uh, there should be two packets inside this box. Now we're going to cook uh, both packets in here so we're going to be doubling the recipe. So it calls for one and a half cups of hot water, two tablespoons of margarine or butter and half a cup of milk. So basically we're going to double that. So it'll be three cups of water, four tablespoons of margarine and uh, one cup of milk. Okay, so there's two cups of water here. As you can see, it's um, semi-hot. And there's the third cup of water here. And then, of course, the milk requires a whole uh, cup of milk. Dump that on in, and then we'll add our four tablespoons of margarine butter, whatever you choose to use uh, there. So that's about two, and uh, we'll call that four. So we'll throw that on the heat, and then we'll get her to start uh, start to boil. Once she comes to a boil, then we'll add our taters. She lets uh, let them let sit for a bit, and then she's good to go. So of course, uh, for a veggie dish, we're going to use some mixed uh, mixed vegetables. Those are the kind that you boil in water and then uh, pretty much serve them. Not the kind that out of a garden that you got to dice up. So yeah, pretty much guys, uh, we have the onions and mushrooms prepped, ready for heat. Same with the potatoes prepped, ready for heat. And the veggies prepped, ready for heat. So uh, 
when we're ready, we just uh, pretty much turn the burner and away she goes. Okay guys, so here we are out here at our barbecue. She is warmed up now. Taking our uh, steaks and putting them on the barbecue. And there you go guys, she's all on the barbecue here, pretty much uh, all ready to go. So we'll let this cook for a bit and we'll come back out and give them a check on. Well guys, uh, here we are, we have the uh, mushrooms and onions um, sautéing right along, um, semi-nicely anyway. We got uh, veggies over here, uh, just about uh, ready to come to a boil. And we have the taters back here, uh, starting to heat up themselves. And of course, um, don't forget about the main course out there on the barbecue, all nice and uh, cooking themselves. You know, everything's coming along uh, fairly well. Nothing really too um, out of the ordinary or uh, major going on. Just your normal cooking and trying not to make a total disaster or burn anything. But we'll uh, get cooking here, guys, and um, see how she goes. Well, guys, we're out here. Just going to give them a bit of a turn here. I know it's going to be a little early to turn them, but uh, hey, you know. So, a little bit more, we'll come back out, add some barbecue sauce, and yeah, away she goes. Well guys, there you go, the uh, steaks are all done. Time to uh, come off the barbecue. They, um, they cooked fairly well, considering I um, haven't really barbecued all winter, due to a uh, regulator issue, as you guys seen in a previous uh, video. But gonna go uh, take these in and check on the veggies and the taters and the mushrooms. Well guys, uh, here you go. We got the finished uh, product here. As you see, we got our veggies all nice and boiled and drained and pretty much good for the eating. Have our taters over here. We got the milk to a boil, added the potato mix, letting her set for a bit and then she'll be good for the serving. Over there we got our sautéed mushrooms and onions uh, ready to go. And of course over here we have the main course itself, the, uh, the little steaks and then the big steaks. All pretty much uh, cooked and ready to eat. But guys, gonna cut all this up, enjoy the barbecue and yeah, we'll see y'all later. So thanks for watching Maxwell's World, comment, subscribe and enjoy.